Spurgeon. I think we're done with the coffee. We're on to the good stuff. Water. <laughs> Delicious. You know, the Lord said something interesting about taste and see that the Lord, he is good. He tastes like honey in a rock. You know, there's a lot to be said for taste. Good grammar, good taste. <laughs> but taste kind of involves savoring. As some culinary people will tell you that sometimes there's more to your taste buds than you realize. They're stimulated by what you put into your mouth and different parts of your tongue and your mouth and the aspect of what God has created causes you to react to it in a pleasant way if you have a memory of that good taste. Or your body will tell you that you need this, like when you're thirsty it will make salt taste saltier because it needs to retain the fluid so your body sometimes dictates your taste. But you know, when you've tasted something good, you go, mmm, that's good, and you want more. And I think Jesus was just simply saying that to us sometimes, to just taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Try it. You'll like it. <laughs> Give it to Mikey. He eats everything. But in devotionals, if there's anything I could say to you about learning to hear God's voice is that if you try it, and it works for you, then do it. If it doesn't, don't do it. Because that's how I learned and how I got to a place where God finally spoke to me. It wasn't because I was anybody special. It wasn't as though I had this certain step pattern where you go through this step and then you go to this step and then you go to this step. And then you go. No, it wasn't any of that. It was simply that in my devotions, as I read them, as I let them sink into my mind and my soul, God hadn't spoken to me yet. And uh, I kept reading about how people heard his voice. They, they, they did not ask for or explain that I had to read the word. They didn't offer me any explanations about how I had to double check what I was hearing. They didn't offer me anything except that he speaks in a still small voice and you could hear him. And when I read history, I heard of Joan of Arc and different people like that who heard God speak. She, voices in her head, they said, Others, according to scripture, heard direct communication. But then I also noticed that when I read other accounts of people hearing God speak, I read about how some people heard thunder. And that made me wonder. <laughs> and how some people heard lightning. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. And when I read about that, then I realized that it wasn't a matter just of hearing God speak, but knowing he's speaking. And so... The devotionals kind of set me up, and then one day, God spoke to me, and that blew my mind. I really wasn't ready for it, and when it happened, I was floored, I'll admit it, kind of caught me right off guard, and I really didn't know what to say. And when God speaks, you really won't know what to say, you'll just listen. And I did, and it was... neat to say the least called to be saints Romans we are very apt to regard the apostolic saints as if they were saints in a more special manner than the other children of God all are saints whom God has called by his grace and sanctified by his spirit but we have a tendency to look upon the apostles as extraordinary beings scarcely subject to the same weaknesses and temptations as ourselves. Yet in so doing, we are forgetful of this truth, that the nearer a man lives to God, the more intensely is he to mourn over his own evil heart. Amen. <laughs> and I never say amen, but wow, is that true or what? <laughs> the more also does the evil of the flesh vex and tease him day by day and gets on his case and is him to pull him down like 
they, yet, go in my gut. The fact is, if we have seen the apostle Paul, we should have thought him remarkably like the rest of his chosen family. And if we had talked with him, we would have said, we find that his experience and ours are much the same. He is more faithful, more holy, and more deeply taught than we are, but he has the self-same trials to endure. No, in some respects, he is more sorely tried than ourselves. Do not then look upon the ancient saints as being exempt either from infirmities or from sins, and do not regard them as some mystic reverence which make, also makes them into some kind of God and we idolaters. Their holiness is attainable by even us. We are called to be saints by that same voice which constrained them to their high vocation. It is a Christian's duty to force his way into the inner circle of saintship. And if these saints were superior to us in their attainments, as they certainly were, let us follow them then. Let us emulate their ardor or their passion and their holiness. We have the same light as they had. The same grace is acceptable to us. And why should we rest satisfied until we have equaled them in heavenly character? They lived with Jesus. They lived for Jesus. They grew like Jesus. Let us live by the same spirit as they did, looking unto Jesus, and our saintship will soon be apparent. They say good company or bad company corrupts good morals and that we should you know, put ourselves in the position of being around godly people and you become godly. I don't know if you get around godly people you become godly, but I know one thing. When I get around godly people, it drives me nuts sometimes because I think, why are they so ungodly? And then I realize it's not just them that's ungodly, but we all are ungodly. And the reality is, is that when we spend time with Jesus, we become like him because he loves us anyways and in spite of ourselves continues to love us as we develop from grace to grace from mercy to mercy from day by day being changed into his image you know we're changed into his image by the spirit of god from glory to glory he is making us his story as we're changed into his image by the spirit of god it's a song by Ernie Routine on Debbie Kerner. But it's true. The reality is, is that you will never see yourself as God sees you or attain unto what God knows you are today, but others may see you change as you are developed by Him more so than you will. Because the closer you get to God, it gets tough. It don't get easier. <laughs> I think I'm, I tell people... Hey, I was perfect when I got saved, man. But after that, I went downhill. <laughs> I don't think everybody's ready for that one. But, well, <laughs> that's the way it was. I always thought I was a pretty good kid until, you know, I got saved. And then I turned into be a real monster. <laughs> but, you know, and I tell people, hey, I, you know, I went to sinner until I got saved. Then I became a sinner. <laughs> but, um, like you... I'm saved just as much by grace as anyone else. And as we do the things that God would have us to do, and as we allow him to change us and make us into better people or to the people of God, not really better because we can't be, but as we develop in those graces that he's given us, we find that it's really all about just spending every day with him. To know that God is with us, to know that God is in us, to know that God will walk with us and talk with us and share with us. When you're talking to someone, you're not paying attention to everything else around you. So get alone with God, talk to him, he'll talk to you, and you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, sort of. And after that, you'll be able to know where to go to know what to do with what it is that he told you to do because you probably won't do it. But when you do, then you'll know why you do what you do when you do it. <laughs> and you'll figure that one out the closer you draw to God, the closer you get to Jesus. The more you listen and hear his voice day by day.